Hello, my name is Kai and I'm going to talk to you about Everest AC and DC electric vehicle charging with open source software and hardware. First, a few words about myself. I have a background in computer science and robotics and I've been working at Pionix on the Everest project since early 2021. So, how do you actually charge a car? Um, most of you that have electric vehicles will probably be familiar with uh, these methods but I'm just gonna recap them real quick so everybody is on the same baseline here. You have your um, basic AC charging when you have a portable charger at home that you just plug into a wall socket or uh, maybe you even have a wall mounted charging station that can charge your car with up to 11 or 22 kilowatts. Uh, in public you sometimes still see these uh, slow AC chargers uh, where you maybe even have to bring your own cable. Just plug that one in, plug into your card, and you authorize with an RFID card or maybe even an app, and then um, charging is properly built to your account. There's an alternative to that, which I would call um, the smart AC charging um, with ISO 15118, or maybe even plug and charge, which is a much more secure way of authorizing uh, your charging session with a backend provider. And um, what's probably for the crowd at this presentation very interesting uh, in the future is the possibility to have bidirectional AC charging. Think about vehicle to grid, vehicle to load scenarios where the car can be uh, used maybe as a solar battery for your home that you can charge when the sun is shining, when energy is cheap, and then you can use that energy in times where the grid is stressed a little bit and you want to reduce your demand on the electricity grid and then um, you might be able to just discharge your car and use uh, and use your car as a battery for your home. Also something that people will be most familiar with is the DC charging using the DIN spec and the ISO norm again. Uh, these are usually the big highway fast chargers where you can charge with up to like 200, 300 kilowatts. And, um, but there's also smaller units for the home. Think about like DC, DC solar systems uh, and things like that. And also here, what's probably very exciting for all of you is uh, upcoming like bidirectional DC uh, charging and um, yeah, taking energy back out of the car again. What is Everest? It's a complete software stack for EV chargers. It runs on basically any embedded Linux uh, platform out there. Um, it is released under the Apache 2.0 license and it, the aim is to support as many different hardware platforms as possible. In this talk, uh, we're gonna mostly focus on building our own charger with an open hardware design that I will present later on. So some of the features that Eris has, it's built on a very modular architecture where different modules can uh, do very specific things and then they can communicate over MQTT with each other. Um, there is also a graphical setup web interface um, that you can use to configure different topologies of charges. You can see some examples here on the slides and you can also use the same uh, web interface to do energy management um, configuration as well. Next, I'm going to quickly um, go through the steps that you would uh, have to take to use this graphical um, web interface to configure your own charging station. Um, first, we start with an EVSE manager. This is a module that owns a charging connector and takes care of the charging logic and the whole charging session handling, and it orchestrates all the other modules access to this one connector. Now we add a board support package, which in this case is the ET driver module, which will handle all the control pilot handling, the access to the relays and the reading of, for example, the RCD currents. Now we add an energy manager. This can be just a very simple configuration, a more advanced one I will uh, show you in a few slides. Following that, uh, we need an authentication mechanism. Here we add an authentication manager 
as well as two token providers um, that will be able to authenticate our charging session with. In the next step, we can add some cloud connectivity. In this example, we add a OCBP 1.6 JSON uh, module, as well as a power meter uh, via Modbus and a system module that supports the rebooting and the firmware update of the charging station via OCBP. And in the last step, we add an API module so that external applications can talk uh, to the Everest system and you know, read out some telemetry, but also control the charging session. As I mentioned before, you can use the same graphical uh, configuration interface to also configure the uh, energy management. Um, here you can see a more complex energy distribution tree um, to be able to load balance multiple charging um, stations. Here we add an uh, energy manager as a root node, add a 22 amp fuse as uh, to our grid connection. Um, and then as children of that fuse, we can add uh, smaller fuses that then connect to the um, EVSE managers underneath it. And these EVSE managers now um, have different cars connected with different charging goals. And the energy management system is able to schedule charging by a global optimizer so that every car gets its, yeah, gets the most optimal charging schedule assigned to it. Everest also comes with uh, software and hardware in the loop simulation facilities, and it implements a lot of protocols that are relevant in the EV charging um, space at the moment, like OCPP 1.6 with 2.0.1 um, support coming very soon. We have support for ISO 1511.8 AC and DC, for the DIN spec, um, for the basic PWM charging. We also have the possibility to do um, communication with Modbus devices, think about external power meters, for example, and also an API over MQTT where you can get some uh, data about the charging session to maybe integrate into your home automation um, system. Everest itself is written in C++17, but there's also uh, language bindings for Python and JavaScript available, so you can write modules in uh, all of these three languages, uh, whichever suits your needs the most. So let's talk about uh, the basic PWM charging. Um, the car and the charging station can communicate over the so-called control pilot signal. This is just a plus minus 12 volt signal where the car can lower the positive part of the signal by adding load resistors and a diode um, to, specific, to lower this voltage to a specific voltage. For example, nine volt signals that the car is connected, six volt means that the car actually wants to charge. And the charging station then can use a PWM duty cycle to encode the um, available current for the car to draw. This is typically between six and 32 amps. So how do you actually build one of these uh, AC chargers? The good news is um, an AC charger is not a complicated battery charger. This part um, happens on the onboard charger in the car. The uh, AC charger is just a smart relay. So what you typically only need is a power path. So a mains connection, some relays, an RCD for safety, optionally maybe a power meter if you want to know uh, how far your car has charged already, plus a microcontroller to interface with this uh, control pilot signal. If you want to do some more advanced things, uh, Linux board is usually uh, a good idea to have as well. I'm now going to talk about our uh, open hardware design that we've released, the Yeti and the Yak boards. They are available under this uh, GitHub repository uh, under the, and are released under the CERN open hardware license uh, version 2 in the permissive uh, flavor. This hardware design has been um, developed to be as developer friendly as possible. So it includes a lot of features, but it's obviously not, um, it's obviously not optimized for, for cost savings or you know, ease of manufacturing in mind. Um, but it has 
a lot of very exciting features. So you can build all kinds of charging stations um, on top of these designs. Uh, it's been designed in KiCad uh, 6 and case design files for 3D printing are also available. So let's talk about uh, the first of these hardware designs, which is the Yeti Powerboard. It's a, it is a 22 kilowatt AC three phase um, powerboard. Um, here on the lower left, you can see a block diagram of, um, of this powerboard and on the right, uh, some pictures of the uh, upper and the lower side of the board. Let's talk about the features that the Yeti board has. It is capable of doing the control pilot signal generation, as well as the control pilot signal sampling in sync with the PWM signal. Um, it also has uh, onboard uh, relays for three phase power switching with uh, welding detection and a three phase power metering support uh, with up to eight kilohertz of sampling. There is the possibility to measure voltages, currents, power frequencies of all phases plus the neutral. There's an RCD module uh, integrated, which can um, detect DC ground faults as well as AC faults. And it can out output the measured leakage current um, as telemetry. There's also a 10 pin connector for a high level board um, to control the Yeti board over UART. Um, this is also then used to connect the Yeti to our um, YAC high level board design, which I will talk about later. If you want to use the Yeti as a standalone charger, which is totally possible, there's also uh, an external connector for a small LCD. You can also add uh, Modbus devices for external power meters. We have some external GPIOs on this board and uh, the board itself can be powered just by the 110 or 230 volt uh, mains connection uh, with an internal power supply then, which is also capable of uh, supplying the YAC board. But you can also connect a external 12 volt supply if you so choose. This uh, board has also a lot of more features, uh, which you can then just look up uh, under this uh, under this link. The Yeti comes with an STM32 microcontroller on board, and the firmware for this microcontroller is also um, available on our GitHub page. Uh, it's licensed under Apache 2.0 license, and the purpose of this uh, microcontroller firmware is that it can control all the devices on um, the Yeti board, and all the electrical safety relevant code is encapsulated into that firmware. Uh, on top of that, it also um, does all of the communication uh, of the Yeti board over the UART uh, using Protobuf with a high level communication board and then with the Everest software. How do you use this uh, Yeti board? You can either use it as a standalone charger or you can use it as a power path um, for a smart charger. You can also configure it to uh, out do automatic switching between these modes in case um, like the higher level uh, Linux board fails for some reason, you can still continue as a standalone charger. If you want to use uh, the Yeti board as a standalone charger, it is a complete AC charger for electric vehicles, um, supporting the basic charging I talked about earlier. Um, this means it contains the complete charging logic that you need and a car will charge immediately when you connect it, um, yeah, when you connect it to the board. Uh, there's also some uh, UART connection that you can use to observe the status of the charging session and also to have limited control over the charging session, such as pausing and resuming the charging. Um, this mode is what we call the high level uh, control mode uh, of the firmware. But you can also use uh, the Yeti board as a power path for a smart charger. Here you would then uh, switch it into the so-called uh, low level control mode, just with a UART command. And here you must provide the uh, charging logic externally. Um, only the, the basic state machine uh, remains in the microcontroller, which is essential for electrical safety. Uh, an external board is then uh, capable to set the PWM duty cycle and is able to read back the control pilot events. And this is also the mode that uh, Everest then uses to enable the so-called high-level charging using ISO 1511.8 or the Dean spec. I will now explain what uh, this high-level charging mode is. 
Um, it uses a power line communication on top of the control pilot PWM signal. It literally uses the same wire using the home plug green file standard. And the following steps need to be done um, to create a successful high level charging session. First, a logical network between the charger and the car is set up using Slack. Then IPv6 uh, link local addresses uh, are set up on both sides. The car will then send a UDP broadcast to find the charger and the charger replies with its uh, IP address and port number. A TCP TLS connection is then uh, created from the car to the charger and over that the ISO 15118 protocol is, uh, is then spoken, which is uh, encoded in some XML data in a binary XML representation called XE. Now I'm going to talk to you about the YAC High Level Control Board. Here on the right side, you can see a few uh, photos of one of these boards assembled. And uh, on the left side, you see a block diagram of uh, this high-level control board. Um, this is used to uh, run Everest on an embedded uh, Linux system. Some of the features of this um, YAC control board is that it can receive a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. This is basically your system where you run your Linux on. Uh, it has a 10-pin connector for a direct connection to the EDI board, a real-time clock with a backup battery, a power line communications green file modem for doing the high-level charging communication with the car that I just talked about. There's also a UART and power connector uh, populated for popular uh, RFID modules. And there's also RS485 uh, Modbus connectivity you have a CAN bus available, you have Ethernet, wireless LAN, um, you have Bluetooth, USB ports, there's even a USB client port to be able to flash uh, the flash storage of the compute module 4. And of course, you have uh, lots of external GPIOs to play with. Now we have everything um, that we need to put together a, a basic but also a smart charging station. So from uh, right to left, you just uh, need a mains free phase uh, power in plug. You need uh, one of these Yeti power boards, plug that in. On the other side, you plug in a uh, type two connector to your car. Um, if you then plug this into, uh, into your car, you're, uh, you're already good to go and you will be able to um, charge your electric vehicle um, with up to 22 kilowatts if the vehicle supports it. If you want to do some uh, more interesting things, uh, like try out some of the um, smart charging protocols and maybe develop some you know, interesting uh, solutions on top of that, you can add this high level control board uh, and then just uh, you know, start working on uh, some interesting implementations. Another exciting project that we're working on right now is a DIY bidirectional DC charger. If you've paid attention over the last couple of minutes, uh, you will have noticed that the YAC board already comes prepared with everything that you would need um, for proper DC communication because the DC communication is done uh, over the same control pilot wire using the high level charging protocols. And the only things you really just need to build a proper DC charger is some power electronics and an isolation monitor, and then there you're pretty much good to go. Obviously, this is a lot more complicated and we are still hard at work um, for creating a good design here, but um, you can definitely stay tuned for more um, coming in the spring or summer from us. If this was interesting for you, uh, here's how you can get involved with the Everest project. Uh, you can check out our code on uh, the GitHub uh, organization. You can also uh, check out the hardware designs and microcontroller firmware. We do have a mailing list if you want to ask some questions. There's the project page on the Linux Foundation Energy website. Uh, we do have a quick start guide to help you get started with development. And on every fourth first day of the month, there is a technical steering committee meeting where we talk about what we implemented in the last uh, weeks leading up to this technical steering committee meeting. The, uh, it's always being announced via the mailing list and uh, recordings are 
made available shortly after on YouTube. Uh, there's also a weekly developer sync meeting where you can join uh, Everest developers, ask questions and start contributing. This uh, meeting happens every Tuesday between 10 and 11 a.m. Central European time. And the meeting link for that is sent out by Armenius. Thank you very much for listening. And yeah, I'm open to receiving questions now.